Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, as the month of May winds up, let's be focused on God's word. You see, this is the secret of our lives. As long as God has said it, there is an anointing and power to bring his word to pass. So you rate your life not by what other people are doing, but what God has said to you. And look at that word and ask yourself, is my life lining up to what he has said? See that now? Now, that's how you rate your life. Don't rate your life by what's happening around you. Don't rate your life by even your government, your government policies. No, don't. Don't. Those things can be misleading. I'm telling you the truth. Praise God. Hey, but before we go into today's broadcast, I would like us to make demand for our daily bread. Now, that's what God said. If Jesus said, ask God for your daily bread, it means your daily bread comes from God, not from your labor. No, not from your labor. It comes from heaven. You remember we ended last week by sharing, don't lay up treasure here on earth, but lay it up in heaven. That's also a command from Jesus. I explained that to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so can we, can we boldly, I want you to boldly make that demand. Are you ready? Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. See, one reason I love the word of God is because it's self-fulfilling. All I need to do is believe it. What does it mean, believe in it? Turn your heart away from every other thing and keep it on his word. Then allow him room to fulfill his word. That's one thing we do to God. That's one thing honor we give to him. We allow him to fulfill what he has said. We don't, we don't force that fulfillment. No, we allow him. He's only called us to believe. Believe what? What he has said. Believing in him, in his ability to fulfill what he has said. Because when we believe him, then we'll keep his word. So as I was sharing with you yesterday on, on the command Jesus gave about taking thought for your life. Now let's go there, Matthew chapter 6. And verse 31, Jesus is speaking and he says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or wherewith shall I be clothed? Now, New King James puts it this way. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or what shall I wear? He says, Don't worry about it. That's taking Thoughts. So worrying is another is another word for taking thoughts. See that now. Now I explain some things to you yesterday. Now look at what Jesus said for that. He said, For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Can I ask you a question? If I ask you now, why do you walk? What's the first thing you would say in truth? Most people will say, so that I can't take care of myself. So you actually work because of the salary they pay. Yeah. So if you don't have a job, would you be comfortable? For most people, the answer will be no. Why? Not because very few people will speak about them being lazy and they don't like being lazy. But most people will say, ah, if I don't have a job, how will I survive? Now, what do they mean surviving? Not because I feel so idle, it's choking me. No, it's, it's actually, how do I survive financially? Because at least at work, at the end of the month, you are paid something. You see that now? So the reason most people will take a job, first and foremost, they've got to break this command of Jesus. He said, take no thought for your life, saying, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I put on? He says, take no thought. Now, the, you are asked, why do you walk? And your first answer is, because I took thoughts. See that? 
See how, now, now that's the truth. It looks funny, but that's just the truth. That's what I was telling yesterday. You need the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. And that's the thing you should be seeking. Now watch this, watch this now. Now he says, for all these things the Gentiles seek. He says, don't do it. He is the one telling us also that this is what the Gentiles seek. This is what they worry about. This is what they do with their minds. Now he says, for all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. So Jesus is not denying the fact that those things are important. He wasn't denying it. But here is what he is telling us, God's children. He says, look, your father knows that you need these things. Now, now, why would Jesus be telling us that our father knows that we need them? Yet he's telling us to take no thought concerning them. He is telling you that your father, who knows you need these things, I kori shabaya, have taken the, up the responsibility to see to it that these things are provided for you. Now, if this is hard for you to believe, then there is something wrong with your faith in the first place. I shouldn't take thought for my life. I shouldn't take thought about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear. I shouldn't take thought. I shouldn't think about it. I shouldn't worry about it. Why? Because my father knows I have need of these things. So he knows that I have need of this. And so what, what's going to happen? He's going to provide them. Ah. Now you want so, so should I just fold my arms and, and, and just wait for God? Brothers and sisters, this is the problem with a lot of believers. This is a big problem and a big crisis. Even a lot of pastors are not helping matters because they don't, they don't believe this truth. Now, understand, it's a command from Jesus. It is a command. Not an advice. Meaning, if you begin to take thought, you are disobeying Jesus Christ. It's that serious. You are disobeying him. Now, how will someone live his life without taking thought? Of, I mean, in reality. Now, now don't, let, you know how to you know, put the Bible aside. Let's, let's be real. There, uh, uh, what do you mean, let's be real? So put the Bible aside, let's be real. What do you mean? We should put the Bible aside and take our mind off God's command. You take your mind off God's command, you are departing from Him. So how can somebody live in life without taking thought? Is that possible? Now this is why the Holy Spirit was given to us. Brothers and sisters, we are not taking advantage of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We are not. You see something like this, you're just like, mm. Maybe he meant worry, you know, like worrying so much that you have to go and steal. No, brothers and sisters. You're worrying that, oh, I don't have a job. Oh, I don't have a well-paying job. Oh, I wish I could get a better paying job. Why? You, okay, get a better paying job. Why? Because of the money. Okay, why do you need the money? So that I can take care of my... Aha, uh -huh, you are taking thoughts. You are taking thoughts. Oh, someone wants to modify it. No, 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 no. Not just because I want to feed myself. I want to, I want to earn better money so that I can have so much money to give for God's work. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You're still worried. You are still worried. Worrying is worrying. Doesn't matter what you're worrying about. Worrying is worrying. And, and he doesn't want us to worry one bit of what anything but specifically now he's telling us about this now i want to follow follow what he said here mm. so remember your father knows that you have need of these things then he says but not us instead of worrying over this thing this is what you should be concerned about but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and 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 i want to look at that part and all these things shall be added to you. So Jesus said, he didn't say, 
think seek the kingdom of God first. When you now get the kingdom of God, then start seeking these things. No. He clearly told us, don't take thought about these things. Don't take thought about. He said it clearly. Then he said, your father knows you need them. Then he said, this is what you should be concerned about. Seek the kingdom of God and it's his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom that belongs to God and his righteousness. Seek his righteousness, his way of doing things. That's, that's what it means. Seek his way of doing things. Now, when you seek his way of doing things, all these things. So now he's telling you, take no thought for your life. So what should I do concerning my needs? He says, seek his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God. Now, I know there's been a misconception about this statement that Jesus made. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So what is seeking first the kingdom of God? He is he, you know, seek, seek to be born again first. Okay. Now, even the concept of being born again, many people still don't understand it. To be born again means to come into eternal life. Now, when you come into eternal life, you will, I am laughing because this is very, very important. See, this thing, when you come into eternal life, you will not be seeking these things. So now, people have misinterpreted that seek first the kingdom of God to be carry your Bible and go and be preaching every day and everywhere. Then God will take care of you. Not necessarily. Now, as, ev as a child of God, every one of us ought to be a witness for Jesus. Now, what are we witnessing? So great things is done for us. Praise God. Now, hey, if, if, if we're going to witness the great things is done for us, it means we are supposed to be manifesting those great things. See that now? We are supposed to be manifesting all the great things he's done for us. What does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? It says, it says now, for example, Jesus said, Ask God to give you this day your daily bread. So you should seek your daily bread that comes from heaven. Yes. Now you should now begin to ask yourself, so how? Now, now this is where meditating comes in. This is where your fellowship with the Holy Spirit comes. This is why we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, mm. thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, the Lord have already spoken to me concerning next month. So I'm trying to manage my thoughts, not to overshoot. Let me finish up these things before we enter into next month's teachings. Now, <laughs> the getting of God's mind concerning everything we do is what he means by seeking God's righteousness. So you are thinking of walking. You need to narrow your mind, your mindset to, to be in tandem with God's mind. You see that now? So you need to go before the Lord and say, Lord, why would you have me do a job? Why would you have me walk? Now, what are you doing? You're seeking God's mind. You see that now? And I'll tell you one truth. Getting money to take care of yourself will not be one of the reasons. He will give you. You can prepare your heart for it. So if it's not to get money, why would he want us to work? You see, that's the problem. We, as God's children, now that's why we should be setting the standard. And what I'm teaching you now is what will give you the ability to set the standard wherever you find yourself. But if your mindset is locked on what will I eat, what will I drink, then you cannot fulfill God's word wherever you are. You can't. I'm telling you, you can't. even in ministry, you can't. Because you see, you, you, you find out that you become a slave to finances 
What do you mean slave to finances? Your actions will now be motivated by how much money you're going to get from a thing. So you, 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 it comes to you. Maybe the Lord speaks to you to go to one village community or they could say, you look at it, no, those people there, they don't have money. Even if you collect offering, how much are we going to get? You, you can't do that. You wouldn't want to go. So there'll have to be a compelling word from the Lord to go. Why? Because you are taking thoughts on how to run the ministry. It's still part of what Jesus said. Because now it's gone beyond what I will eat to what will the ministry survive on. <laughs> it's That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. See, paying attention to God and his word, sitting back to really think and say, Lord, I, you know, Sometimes it's important to ask yourself, why are you really born again? Why are you really born again? If you are conscious, you would notice this, that, you know, why are you born again? Oh, I want to make heaven. I want to make heaven. You will notice that that thought of making heaven has somehow been reducing. People are not so much about, I want to make heaven. Now, not because it's completely wrong, but you see, our consciousness is beginning to rise to realize that we ought to dominate here first. If we don't dominate here, then the whole thought of going to heaven is very far. You see, there are things that will happen or must happen before the thought of Jesus coming again. God has given us the job to dominate this earth. Jesus said, occupy till I come. So I ask you, where have you occupied? And he's not talking of physical occupation. He's talking of truly mental occupation. Occupation. He's talking about changing the way the society reasons and think. But you see, you are already still thinking like them. So how do you bring them out of their place of thinking to your place of thinking? How? How do you bring the society or the world from their place of thinking to God's righteousness? How? When you're still thinking like them. I pray the Lord give you understanding truly because there's so much work. Sometimes when I meditate on these things, I, I just say, Lord, where do we even start from? The work is so big and we have not even started. We are recruiting people to join as human in the kingdom. But then the true principles of the kingdom, the true benefit of living eternal life, we're neglecting. And so we raise people and we end up forcing them to backslide. That's what's going on. Because you raise people, they are young, and we raise them with so much fire. But then when they now start growing and start raising families, then we, the same we, start asking, so how will you feed your family? And we begin to put them under pressure. Go get a job. Go, go, go do this. Say, no, I, sir, I want to just serve God. Ah, ah, this thing. Go and get a job. We, from that moment, I'm telling you the truth. From that moment, we begin to kill everything we have built in them. And that's because we don't know better. That's the problem. My time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. God bless you. Bye-bye.